Hello, aspiring artists. It's Miss Patty at Samuel's Public Library. So good to see you or be with you. <laughs> and um, I hope you're having a great summer. I know it's coming to a close and school options are um, coming together. So I'd love to spend some time with you uh, creating something. Uh, I hope you had a chance to um, work with uh, Cezanne and uh, create a still life that's still up if you want to use it. So today we're going to highlight the life of Vincent Van Gogh. He's one of my personal favorites uh, because his life was very unique. Um, it had suffering and his paintings um, are very passionate and show uh, that suffering is evident and yet his colors and expressiveness are just amazing. So first, I will <clears throat> do a little background on his life and then um, we will, after we go through some slides, we will go ahead and paint together and you will be able to pause the video anytime you need to take some time to catch up. So what um, I'm going to do in maybe 45 minutes, you might want to take more like an hour and a half or something. So we'll see uh, at your convenience and then you can even put it down and come back to it. So and if you do complete it, I would love for you to bring it to the library. And by the way, I wanted to tell you, I hope you can come in. We're still doing prizes. And for summer reading program, it goes till August 27th. So um, I hope you can come in and get prizes for the books you're reading. Okay, so I'm going to share this with our slideshow. There we go. So hopefully you can see this. This is a self-portrait of Vincent Van Gogh. He did many, and you can see that um, his style is very unique. Lots of short, thick brush strokes. So that is Vincent Van Gogh. Um, this is a quote by him, be clearly aware of the stars and infinity on high, then life seems almost enchanted after all. So that is um, a little quote, and today we'll be focusing on Starry Night, which is apparently his most popular painting, and I bet you've seen it before. So his overview of his life, he was born in the Netherlands, so he was Dutch, where all the tulips come from. In 1853, he experimented with lots of different jobs until he settled on painting at age 27. He practiced by copying uh, master painters like Rembrandt, who was also Dutch from his country. And then he moved to Paris, that was really an art center, Cezanne was, um, I believe, post-impressionist or impressionist, and, and then um, Van Gogh got labeled post-impressionist. And uh, then he moved to southern France because he liked how sunny it was. He loved the sunshine, and there's a lot of light in his paintings and bold yellows and other colors. He was extraordinary. He painted almost 2,000 paintings in 10 years, from 27 until his death at age 37. That is a lot of painting. He only sold one painting in his life. And I will show you that a picture of the one that sold. And, um, and, and so he lived very poor and simply, but this year in May, just a couple of months, a few months ago, one of his paintings sold for $66 million. I, can you imagine? 
what would he think if he was alive today? <laughs> so um, one of the things that was very sweet is that he uh, had a brother named Theo who adored him and believed in his talent and supported him. Even when he was poor, Theo would send money. And he also tried to, he was an art dealer, so he would try very hard to um, talk up his brother's works. So he really believed he was great and Theo was right. He died in 1890 um, and he had mental difficulties and some believe it was at least partly significantly contributed that he would, when he was outdoors painting, um, maybe he didn't ran out of water or whatever, he would lick his paints. And um, at that time, the thick um, paints that he was using had lead in them. And lead will cause your mind to um, do crazy things. So um, we're not sure, but it's very likely that that contributed to his difficulties. Okay, so here's a painting. I thought I'd just give you a, a couple of some of his other works before we start painting together. This is called Rocking the Baby. So if you look at this, uh, it's like, where's the baby? So what they would do is the baby would be in the cradle and you can see that Madame is holding a rope and she would just sit in her chair and just pull on the rope that was tied to the cradle. So that would just easily keep, uh, she could just keep the uh, cradle rocking. That's kind of funny when you see the title. Most of us today, it's like she's holding a rope and where's the baby? So the next painting is, uh, let me see, it is called The Red Vineyard at Arms. And this is the only painting that was sold in his lifetime. Little did the person know when they bought it that it would soon be worth thousands and millions of dollars. Again, you see his strong colors and lots of brush strokes. This is a picture of his bedroom. So he painted his bedroom and you see, uh, maybe he's got, looks like he's got his self portrait on the wall, um, his essentials, but you can see that he lived very simply. And I really like his colors. And this is another one. His outdoor paintings are really beautiful. And this is boating by the river of Orsi in uh, France. So we'll um, get ready for um, painting together, Starry Night. This is a quote he said, this morning I saw the countryside a long time before sunrise with nothing but the morning star, which looked very big. He wrote his, um, to his brother Theo, describing his inspiration for the starry night that he painted in 1889. So um, at this point in time, he was in a hospital to take care of his, him um, during a time where his mind was very troubled. But he continued to make art, which is very remarkable. So here we're looking at the starry night. And again, bold, bold colors, short brush strokes. And he would literally um, do blobs of paint right from the tube and uh, work quickly. And this was called um, impasto, that is a technique of painting. And, um, and this painting has a lot of symbolism in it. Uh, Van Gogh was very religious. He had one of his um, 
hopes when he was younger was to be a minister and he felt very close to God. And in this painting, you can see the cypress tree reaches to the heaven and it parallels to the uh, steeple, the church steeple that you see that also reaches to heaven. And in this uh, painting, you see all the stars and there are purposefully 11 stars from the passage in the Bible in Genesis, um, in, in case you want to look it up. Um, it is in uh, Genesis 39, and it's the story of Joseph with his brothers. He had um, dreams, and this particular dream, he dreamed that um, there were, it was a vault of heaven, and um, 11 stars in the heavens. So uh, these uh, are symbols that were important to Vincent. So you see the swirls gives it a lot of movement, a feeling of windiness, and it's dark night, and yet there's points of light that um, symbolize hope, right? Okay, so I am going to get ready and we're gonna paint together and I will get my, you might wanna get your painting clothes on. A shirt or something. And I wanted to give you some options today. You may want to paint. I'm using acrylic paints, but you could use watercolor if you can do it thickly. But you know, anything goes. When you're painting, it's your work. You get to do it. So I just thought I would show you um, some different. Um, so we saw the Starry Night. And these are some other versions that just because I picked um, pictures that I, I, I tried to copy Vincent's. This is uh, a, one of um, a child's who decided to go with different colors. So you could do the same thing. You could go with some different, very different colors as we um, paint together. Or color, or you also can use colored pencil or crayons for that matter. So here's another one, very different colors, but very beautiful. This is really wild. This person put all kinds of details and fun and swirls and decorations. And lastly, here's another one with lots of tiny little brush strokes like Vincent, very detailed. So, and I um, thought I would show you some of the different brushes that you can use if you're not using colored pencil or crayon. Um, these are typical brushes and what they do, a flat brush, uh, a smaller flat brush, and even smaller. And this is an angled, so you can change it up and this is a round brush and you can press it so it makes that design and a pointy little brush for details and then this is a fan brush and this and then of course you can use a toothbrush and do spatters i didn't do any spatters on mine but this fan brush i will tell you i used a lot and if you don't have a fan brush that looks like this, you can make your brush fan out by holding it like that and then dragging it to do the same idea that I used a lot so that the bristles just kind of splay out and do the design that you would like. So, um, here we go. 
Let's go. So I'm going to pull um, my easel around to show you. Indeed, what we're doing. Oh, I forgot to show you that if you have a big person or you have access to a computer, you can download a coloring pages of artists. And this is a coloring page of Starry Night. And so if you want to skip all this um, painting business and use this for colored pencil or crayons or uh, oil uh, crayons, you could do that. Now, I will show you that with what I'm doing today, I'm kind of following, let's see if you can see this well. So, these are the steps that we're doing right there, all the way to the end. Now, this is, I picked it because it's a little simpler and uh, we don't have the village scene that um, Vincent's uh, Starry Night has, but that's okay. That if you want to do that and you find a picture of the full painting, you can do that. But for our purposes today, I thought we would simplify it. So one thing, um, if you, you've, some of you have been to my class before and you know that we uh, put our good watercolor acrylic uh, quality paper down and we use a piece of cardboard to and masking tape to just hold it down. And then that way, if you need to go have lunch um, or you, in this, um, with Vincent's style in thick painting, it didn't wrinkle as much. But this taping it down prevents it from wrinkling and then being frustrated with your painting. So, um, first, so we want to tape down our white sheet of paper. And um, at any point, you can just pause this and um, while you accomplish that, I'm gonna keep going, but if you pause it, then you can pick up once you've achieved that. And then I used this um, big flat brush with my blue paint and just covered nice and thickly all the way across. And um, it's up to you, but if you want to, uh, you could use a piece of chalk and you could uh, chalk in the, sun, the moon um, that's going to be in the horizon and you could chalk the 11 stars all around and you could chalk the swirl of wind like this, right? And the mountains right here and then the foreground of the earth that's closest. So that's up to you, um, but you can pencil it in. But first thing, we're gonna paint the whole thing blue. And then I found it easy to either use the round brush or the angled brush, whichever you're more comfortable with, and um, put in my, I mixed my, let me see if I can show you this here. Here's my paint palette. I've got yellow. I've got, let's see if I can pull this up for you. I've got a big puddle of yellow. I've got a big puddle of white, a teeny bit of the orange, the dark blue, the lighter blue, a little bit of green, and of course the black. So there you go. Those are the colors that I use to create this. 
So again, you can pause and you can put that on a paper plate. I find it very handy when I need to take a break from painting to put it in a plastic Ziploc and uh, save it for later and then come back to it. And that's what I did when I was uh, painting this. So, so we have, uh, let's just say you've paused me and you've achieved this. Then we're going to go. So here we are. We've accomplished this. One, two, and three. Next, we're going to work on we, we're going to put in our 11 stars, as you see. 11 and the moon. And I used the fan brush, and I'll show you that to do more of the swirling that, that helps to achieve the swirling that Vincent did. So why don't we do that now? I will go ahead and um, plop in my 11 stars here. And you can either do it really strong and bright, or you can make it a little paler, or like those examples I showed you before, you can um, do totally different, outrageously fun colors. It's up to you. So I'm going to put in one here, one there, and There. Definitely one there. And one there. And you'll notice when you see um, Van Gogh's, he knew what he was doing, but he's it's not that precise. So he, he worked very quickly. And so I don't know, maybe one here. One here. Uh, maybe one lower on the horizon. Okay. And so I told you about our fan brush, the magic fan brush. I mean, I'm in love with this thing. So if you want to, like Vincent did, make some of the swirls around, around it, in, the, in some of his pictures he had a lot of white as well as yellow. And so if you're using this, or like I said, you can take your, your brush and just splay it and use that. But you have to be able to get your hands a little painty. So um, I used it to go around the moon as well. And you remember, 
these are the colors that I saw in his painting, but you may want to do something different. It's kind of fun. This is sort of fun to see what happens. You just um, And if you want to tidy it up, I kind of got carried away here. Um, I can um, go back with a little, my little brush. And did I forget to tell you that you need lots of paper towel? That always helps. So I want to just make sure that my center is still there. There we go. And in some of these, you can mix that little bit of orange with a lot of yellow. Maybe give it a little center. But you don't have to. So you see what's happening there. And so I'm going to kind of keep us moving. So you see what I'm doing with those and the moon part and then with my orange very very subtle i mixed a little bit of orange and yellow so that it's there's kind of the the moon here in the center the, I'm using my round brush and just going around. I think I wanted a little orange here. I don't know if that's a word or in GR. Do you? So there you go. Um, and so we're kind of here. We're on this section. And as you can see from here, there's some detailing in here, a little bit of the, the yellows. And you have a choice. You can use this round brush and just go with the yellow, creamy, creamy yellow that you see in here that highlights and sparkles if you would like. Just brings in a little bit of depth and um, again, the movement that he was so famous for. Sort of relaxing, isn't it? Just to, mm -hmm. 
And again, just pause whenever you need to do something else. And the same thing in here. And if you want to speed it up, you can use your fan brush. Because you can work pretty quickly. I'm kind of curious if you just used a tiny looks like he used a tiny round brush but i think i'm going to do a little bit of this So you can finish all those and you kind of get the idea. Then the other thing is that there's the greens in the foreground. It's kind of dark night, so um, we can use the green and a little blue. I mix the green and the blue here. Let's see, to make it a little bit teal. See, and since it's on a black foreground, we'll see what that does. So I'm working kind of quickly, not as carefully as I might normally, but just so you get the idea. And because of the black in here, you can see that it's dark, but it's, it's the suggestion of the grass and the fields at night. So there's our foreground. Next, um, when you're ready, after you've um, gotten a little further and you've got all your swirls and your stars, you'll want to plop in the big cypress tree right here. As you can see. So the, the cypress tree that's Pointing to heaven, I'll use one of these other illustrations that you can see, this cypress tree. It's a good one because um, you want to outline it in black. And again, if you want to use your um, chalk so that um, then you can just sort of do a trial with the chalk first. So I'm going to these up pretty high and almost all the way, but not quite to the top. And I'm going to do it in such a way that I'm not, um, destroying any of my stars, because those are important to keep in. I 
it comes on my down. I've got my tiny round brush. That's good for detailing. And it's going to go all the way down. So the black is really just your outline. And there's little branches that come out. And So there's our cypress tree. And then we'll give them just a little bit of detailing. So that we kind of see that it might overlap. Little branches that come out here and there. There's little swirls. So you've got that penciled in, and then you can mix the greens, the teals. Vincent did lots of different shading. Now this person who did this picture did mostly the greens. Um, but there are lots of choices. And when Vincent did it, he put um, some browns and greens. So I'll just show you. This was my final um, one I wanted to show you when I was all done. So you can see the different shades. I, I made a brown, which is the a little teeny touch of black with the yellow and the orange and the blue will make a nice brown and then I used a little bit of the darker green so it was really really fun to do this and I hope that you have fun doing it too and if you do complete it I would love for you to bring it in and show me I would love to see it completed. So um, I've enjoyed doing this for you. I wanted to tell you too that we have um, oodles of um, art geeks that are very inspiring um, to check out. This is one on Van Gogh. Uh, this is for kids. This is another one by Van Gogh. Oh, I wanted to show you. This is one of my favorites. This is, is beautiful. This is his irises, field of irises. Isn't that gorgeous? So he did so many different beautiful works. Just amazing. Um, so we have that. And we have, um, this one is broader. It has uh, his uh, biography and works, but it has more of a history of all the artists. So, so again, thank you for um, watching with me, and uh, I hope to see you coming soon. Bye.